Bueno, buenos días. Good morning. Thank you very much, Nexus, for inviting the Asociación Española, a healthcare institution, in this technological event. The day after tomorrow, we'll be celebrating our 116th anniversary. It was established in 1853 by the immigrants that arrived in the country in the 19th century. When it was established, there were national heroes such as Oribe and Rivera and Lavalleja who were still alive. Now our uh, doctors go and visit their patients at their own home. So it's been a long evolution. And at every point in time, our features changed. But the essential thing has been to keep the solidarity within the institution and adjust to the changes that time brought. More than 200 healthcare institutions have closed since we were established many years ago. And we have lasted, and during the 20th century, our main feature was to build infrastructure. We built hospitals and we added technology but mostly medical technology and health-related technology. In the 21st century, our strategy is convergence, convergence between the cares that we offer and also from an entrepreneurial point of view. So the Española is like a Netflix series. It has a director for each chapter, and during 116 years, there have been many directors that have been in charge in order to make it adapt to the times. Uh, sorry, 116 years. So here we have the figures concerning our hospital, the care uh, to patients in at, at home, the outpatient clinic, and also support services such as pharmacy, lab, and uh, we have 190,000 users. So we have a very large staff. The mission at the beginning was not defined, but it coincides now with the regulations that were approved in 1953. It's uh, to set up a mutual assistance fund and take care of the members' health. What is its reason of being? Well, to take care of the customers throughout their life, but the patients are actually the owners. That is why it's called a mutual care association, because we, the owners, are at the same time the customers. And for this purpose, we need to adapt to the technological tools and the needs of the customers. Until a few years ago, the paradigm was paternalism in medical care. And this has to do, this image has to do with the clinical files that we have developed. In the 90s, we started establishing some electronic files for the patients, and they were centered in the doctors first, but now they are centered in the patient for various reasons, because we are in the era of rights, the right of the patients, and therefore the medical history helps the doctor, but it's much more helpful because now it's centered on the user. The digital transformation in La Española is based on three pillars. Firstly, the electronic medical file, leaving a sound aside the thousands of kilos of uh, paper and handwritten files. Secondly, to support these electronic files with all the systems that uh, are used by the institution, uh, the cash flow, the accounting statements, the reserves, the financial reserves, 
And it's not only a system of hospital management that we were looking for. We saw that there were very good systems, one for the management of the institution, and the other one for outpatients. But uh, we needed something that would bring both systems together and include the attention at hospital. For a uh, an assistance point of view, it is necessary to have convergence between all the stages of assistance in their homes, when they go to the pharmacy, when they get a diagnosis, or when they are at the hospital. There's a group of companies that are members or that are related to La Española, for example, Gremca, which is a cooperative, and also a company that offers the ambulances in cases of emergency. There's another one called Family, and it was necessary to bring all of them together and have this information in the electronic files. So what was our strategy? Firstly, in 1998, the Board of Directors decided to launch a system of electronic files by sector. Cardiology on the one hand, oncology, also the intensive care units, but they were centered on the doctor and Sometimes they didn't even write down their conclusions. They would record them, and we had to have people to write down what the doctors had recorded. So it was a kind of paleolithic method. Then we consulted a world class when we saw how long it took and what it implied in various uh, regards, we realized that the requirements were too complicated. At that time, we were working with CPA Ferrer, an accounting firm, and they told me, why don't you talk to Nicolás Jodal? They have a good solution. And so we got together and saw that they had developed instruments for outpatient care and we launched Virason. We met with the doctors, the nurses, the lab technicians, IT experts within uh, La Española, and we discussed various names and ended up choosing Virason, which is a light wind that blows in Uruguay and changes directions from time to time. Mm -hmm. So now everybody, the doctors, did not talk about Virason, even the doctors. And the results were many. Firstly, at the moment, except for the food that is given to the patients, everything else is recorded electronically. So all the medical files, etc., are electronic. The process of adoptions of the page of uh, of the ad adoption of these systems took uh, some time, and we didn't force anyone to adopt it. But the doctors, just by themselves, were converted to the IT means, and now no doctors ask to use paper. They write a prescription from time to time on paper, but usually they don't. So it has been uh, very well accepted. And the advantages are the security of the patient, because there are no errors with the medications. It's not necessary to interpret the hieroglyphics written by the doctors. And we even have robots that uh, choose the medications based on a barcode. And there's no errors when reading the medical file. Now the doctors 
say, well, at the emergency, there's already a diagnosis. They have to write down. It's not a question of crossing uh, some uh, boxes. When the patient gets to the doctor, there's already a diagnosis that has been done at the emergency room. There are bracelets which identify the patient without error. And of course, the members of this institution are happier because in the past, the medical file many times did not reach the doctor in time for the consultation. Maybe there was a patient that came from the interior of the country. There was an emergency, and the, the file was not there. Now they go to the pharmacy, they go anywhere, and the file is available. And the patients are happier because they can find, for example, the lab results online. We used to spend uh, 50,000 pages in the central lab to print the results. Now we've gone down to 9,000 because people prefer the application. Even if 26% of our members are above 65 years old. And also the resources have been optimized. We save um, half a million dollars by not printing the x-rays we save human resources because the clinical files don't need to be carried from one place to the other. And we have restructured everything without laying off anyone in the staff. We have just redistributed uh, our people. So this was a big challenge for our medical institution, but we are really happy that we took this step because the medicine of the future is the medicine based on artificial intelligence, which will be able to make a diagnosis. The doctors won't need to make a report, for example, on a CAT scan. That will be done automatically, and the doctors will just have to tell the patients, patients what the results were, and they will have more time to devote to the patients. But it is necessary to integrate our activities with IT. Otherwise, we will not move towards AI in medicine. And now I'm going to give the floor to some of my colleagues that will explain the details of this Vidason project and what we have been able to achieve. The, the audience, there are many engineers, so I'll leave the floor now to Anna, who will explain these details better than I. Bueno, buenos días. Muchas gracias. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, the Virazon project, as Julio said, um, started contributing to the problem that we have at the center of our institution, which is the electronic clinical record of our patients. It's taken as a starting point, uh, the K2BG um, um, platform and extended it with modules that were developed to, for the um, hospitalization. Uh, there was a, a key, uh, was a team of Genexus consultant inside uh, our institution. There were computing people from our side, integration infrastructure people, and also a benchmark team from the doctor's side, nurses, and so on, over 80 people. Now, this project was carried out in uh, uh, several stages and uh, different fronts at the same time. In 2015, we started with a pilot plan in the clinic called Las Torres, where the clinical history of the uh, polyclinic, something that we really feel that made a difference, is that uh, the first day uh, the doctor opened uh, the record of a patient, it, it didn't open it with a, a page in blank. So we generated uh, the contents of all uh, um, the departments, cardiology, uh, gynecology, and so on. We started 
on day one with almost 7 million documents in our clinical records as a product of all the previous um, day, uh, data. And that uh, contributed to having this good beginning. At the same time, on that same year, we implemented PAT and uh, we digitalized all the medical images, um, CAT scan, mammographies, densitometries, and all that was fully integrated to the clinical record of a patient. On day one, which was also the pilot uh, day, we started with the flow of electronic prescriptions both for procedures and medicine that was fully integrated. This means that uh, we didn't need any, any uh, recipe on paper in all the network of um, um, chemists from our institution. They already had the prescriptions. This also allowed us uh, to deliver to the patient's home. It was impossible for a patient to read uh, the prescription from his doctor uh, on the phone and get the pr and they get the medicine. So we were able to deliver uh, to our patients' home. And recently, we've been uh, in, uh, we've been able to include a robot um, delivering uh, medicine um, automatically in the Punta Carretas clinic. Since we're doing this at very various uh, parallel fronts, in 2017, we completed the clinical record uh, in over 20 uh, clinics, and we would cater for 150,000 appointments a month. As Julio said, we also developed uh, the emergency module in 2016. That model is integrated to a system that allows us to quickly classify our patients according to the urgency um, um, level. We um, adopted the trilogic um, uh, with, uh, with our uh, system. It's from Spain, and so through very quick, quick quiz questions, we can um, organize the service according to the urgency, not the seriousness of the patient, and it is classified and sorted out. Now, the emergency system, apart from automating all the flow, has several interesting tools optimizing and managing the service better and to provide better health care to uh, better service. Here we can see the map of, uh, of the emergency. Very quickly, this allows us to see how things are. You see the, the red are the boxes that are um, um, already engaged. The, the green ones are the ones that are free. The, the yellow ones are the ones that can leave the emergency to a room, or uh, but they can't leave yet. And um, if there is someone in purple, uh, if it's been in the if a patient has entered the emergency room and no one has seen him, so this is an alert, a warning to say, well, this may happen, but uh, it shouldn't. Uh, we did this in all the uh, emergency doors at uh, La Española. Parallel to this, we developed the hospitalization module. It uh, was completed last year in 2018. Now we have a system which is quite complex. There are many professionals interacting, many services, a lot of information is gathered. Um, and uh, a way that was found that was quite in intuitive uh, to expose all that um, information, all those data, is the one that you have there. You know, uh, a patient simulating the WhatsApp dialogue, everything that the doctor has prescribed, it's on the left. And on the right is everything that the experts and the nurses are doing, apart from including mobile devices in the hospital to read the, the bracelets and identify the patients. Also, in, in the nursery room where they have everything uh, recorded and make any changes in the shifts and uh, replace all the spreadsheets that were being used. Uh, we also completed the module of uh, domicile. Uh, all calls 
uh, from uh, a patient uh, requiring a, a doctor at home um, was automated. All calls are received in a booth. They are recorded and georeferenced with a GMAP system. They are sorted out with a triage that we use there, random nano, to classify them, to sort them out in five um, uh, sorts. Um, key one, where there's risk of life until the ones that are uh, not so serious. And all this is um, sent to the uh, tablet of all doctors. At the beginning of this year, we completed the project. It was completed with the latest module of hospital management that was in March this year. And uh, now there are about 19 million documents. It's a repository. If you look at the first bar in 2015, that's the way it started. It started with almost 7 million documents and now as you can see, 23 teras of images. That's all we have now. Now, taking advantage of the opportunities uh, to have an electronic clinical record, we wanted to exploit it in favor of the users or um, members' experiences. So parallel to this, parallel to this project, uh, we've been able to carry out other projects to uh, for, for self-management. And thus, we first released a, a new portal where we uh, made the reports of all uh, exams made, uh, CT scans, uh, x-rays, gynecological tests, cardiology tests, uh, all reports in the electronic record of a patient were released. Apart from improving other functionalities, we added online payment, uh, credit and debit card payments, also supported by the fact that we have electronic prescriptions, so all prescriptions now may be paid online, apart from uh, um, the uh, appointment fees and so on. The next step, we released a mobile application. This project of a mobile application, which was uh, developed with the Prafu uh, company. It was not a technology project or, or a change of um, technological experience of users, but this was done together uh, to, to deeply reorganize and restructure the agenda processes, supported in a very important uh, uh, engine because we had to improve the availability of shifts. Uh, now, uh, what happens if I have a wonderful PP, but uh, whenever I need an appointment, I, I, I don't. I don't have it. So we added then this improvement of the user experience or member experience. We also added self-management facilities in our own um, facilities with totems that allow us to make payments and uh, announce yourself when you go to an appointment. The clinical record then, plus the integrated medical uh, technology, uh, self-management uh, possibilities have allowed us to have a full and integrated system. That's the word I would like to focus on out of all the characteristics that we can uh, this, uh, talk about this project, we can say that everything that we've done, all the energy and effort that we uh, put in integration uh, allowed us to have full experiences that process were uh, fully digitalized. And let me mention just, uh, just one, because we're running short of time, because there are three examples of integrations that we made. The first one, is the flow of electronic prescriptions. The clinical record uh, produces, uh, issues prescriptions that are sent as messages under the H HDS 7 standards. Then we have ESB. Um, it, those prescriptions coming from that standard are taken, transformed, and distributed so that they can be managed by all the other systems that are involved in the, in the process. All these circuits were modeled in a workflow 
because there are many circuits. I mean, if the patient is ambulatory, it's a day patient, then it pays. If it's uh, hospitalized, it doesn't pay. I mean, there are many circuits that prescription follow. So uh, we modeled it with a GX flow. And this means that in the case of um, um, a test to be made, well, it has to be paid. It can be paid in the totem. It can be paid online. Once it's coordinated, the test is made, whether it's lab or, or purchase of an image. Then um, the prescription appears automatically in the department. Then once it is made, a uh, report is made, and that goes into the electronic record. That's how the cycle is closed. In the case of uh, the chemist, well, it receives this prescription. Then the chemist determines the commercial brand of the, of the product. It's prepared and uh, delivered. There are many, many circuits. These are just two um, showing how we have modeled and automated all flows. The second integration example I want to share with you uh, is totems. You may think that after two, behind two easy functionalities like uh, announcing yourself for an appointment or making a credit payment is are easy. But behind this implementation, we have a very complex web of suppliers um, and providers. And, uh, and we have seven, in fact. The, the supplier of this design of totems, the supplier of the software, uh, for the Tottens, we have Genexus Consulting with integration and the um, record for the um, patient to announce himself. We have Praful for two option prescriptions, then uh, current account and uh, evaluations, Geocom. That was Española. Geocom is the multi-channel um, um, collection. and. Uh, uh, electronic invoicing because I'm uh, issuing this in Uruguay. So we have over seven. We have seven um, suppliers. Well, the the risk analysis of this project was zero uh, in 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 meaning zero that uh, seen in zero meaning that we were not going to be successful. However, we were, and the latest integration is the most recent one is the one uh, when we in, uh, introduce a robot in Punta Carretas, that's a neighborhood in Montevideo, to deliver, uh, prescrip to, to deliver medicine. As Julio said, in January, we decided to buy the robot. Uh, four months later, they sent us a manual in German. Um, uh, although it's an old one, we didn't know it. And the robot uh, was coming uh, a week before the polyclinic uh, opened. So all the integration had to be done with an expert who was in Italy, a virtual robot. Um, it was quite difficult. But everything went out fine. The robot came in. And all the tests that we had made remotely uh, worked wonderfully. And uh, we started operations, and it's still working. How does the robot communicate with the chemist's system? Well, there are several interactions. Some are started by the system. Others are started by the chemist system. Others are started by the robot itself. For instance, the chemist system is constantly asking the robot about the state, and it sends the request for medicine. Then uh, chemists uh, uh, receive the prescriptions through the chemical record. The person decided what it wanted, what he wanted. It asked uh, for the product to the robot, and the robot delivers. The chemist system is always telling the robot the, the, the stock. And there are others that the robot uh, initiates to load um, the, 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 the uh, product. And it puts everything in a funnel. And then it asks whether they are accepted as products. If the system uh, allows it, um, while well, all the uh, medicine are recharged and are placed according to a certain algorithm that will allow them to optimize delivery. Because uh, in that same flow, it generates the whole delivery. According to the combinations, it would take shorter uh, roads because uh, medicine is distributed according to, to that algorithm. 
That is why integration has been fundamental, a key challenge for all the stages of the project. It will continue being a key issue. Although we've done lots of things, and there is no end to it. There are more services, more equipment, more automation to be implemented. We are already working to include um, the electrocardiogram tracing that uh, for which there is an automated way of uh, classifying those uh, hematologic tracings and support doctors in that way. We are also working on a new physiotherapeutical system to include new technologies. Lastly, I would like to mention that um, for us, all along this year, integration of system has been key, as I said, but as important as that is to integrate teams and people. We work with multidisciplinary teams with multiple suppliers, doctors, nurses, IT people. And that's why I would like you to know some of the representatives of the uh, Española team. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to do anything. Okay.